We're finally making more progress on e-bike version 9.0. We're fitting the actual battery pack in the frame. We're doing more dumb frame mods and hopefully by the end of this, all of the fabrication will be finished. Either way, it's a ton of work, so let's go. This is where I left you guys last time with most of the basic structure of the truss pretty much tacked together. It's marginally parallel and or straight. It's definitely not perfect and nothing on this is going to be perfectly aligned, but at least most of these are pretty parallel. Most of the issues now after tweaking it quite a bit are just in this front part where these two bars are kind of sloping down a little bit to the right. It's livable, but it definitely bothers me so I will be trying to hammer and maybe massage that a little bit into a better position. I did move that top bar a little further out but will be welding that on later. Here I am just cleaning up these reinforcement plates. These L brackets used to be on the inside of the frame. I could have left them in there but I was thinking I was going to have to cut away so much of them in order to fit the battery that why not just put them on the outside of the frame because I have way more room on the outside and almost almost zero room on the inside. So what I'm basically doing is putting them in the exact same position only on the outside of the frame instead of where they were on the inside. They definitely will help with rigidity and adding more structural integrity so I definitely want to keep them and I figured they're just going to give another look of maybe some external armor. I did have to sand off about 80 layers of paint to get to the bare metal but this is necessary because I'm going to attempt to weld these onto the thin sheet metal frame. And while I already had the flap disc out, I might as well clean up all of those sharp edges. Next on the list of things to do is putting the actual battery pack into the frame. This isn't the first time, but it is the first time on camera, just showing you that it does indeed fit. I also did this so I could recheck the truss and make sure it fits with the battery because the first time I did this it was a little too close to the battery and I needed to change a few things. The next few holes I make in this frame are very important because they're going to positionally align where this truss is going to sit permanently. If I mess this up then it's going to be even more misaligned than it is naturally. My thoughts on mounting the truss to the frame was so that I had threaded rod going through the square tubing. This would make it so no matter how much I tightened it, it wasn't going to collapse the tubing. I'm also using acorn nuts for a more finished look, although they do protrude quite a bit out of the sides. If I was going to be doing a lot of pedaling, these might interfere with your knees or your legs when you're pedaling, but this bike is probably going to weigh about 130 pounds, so probably not going to be pedaling it too often. If these acorn nuts do end up being quite a nuisance while I'm riding the bike, I will find a different solution for fastening the ends of the threaded rods. The other idea I had was just welding in some nuts to the ends of the square tubing and then just threading a bolt into that on either side, but I figured this was probably going to be the strongest solution. Again, compared to what was there and what this truss is taking place of, this is totally overkill. I didn't quite get the alignment on this hole exact, so just giving it a little persuasion with the Dremel tool and then the rod drop right in there. As I told you guys in the last episode, I tried everywhere to fit this controller anywhere but the bottom because I really didn't want to put it here, but it was literally the only place I could fit it without getting too ridiculous. It'll be pretty easy to mount, but I will have to devise a cover, otherwise rocks are just going to be thrown into my controller. And here's a progress report on where we are at right now and the basic truss is all mounted up and secured. I will be adding even more mount points, but it's looking pretty good so far.
Even though functionally it will work in this state, I did want to add even more rigidity and structural integrity, but most of these extra pieces I'm going to be putting on here are more for aesthetics. This front piece will also serve the function of allowing a bit more room for all of the cables and electronics that are going to go inside of the frame. Because the battery is taking up so much room, I figured if I already have a bump going on anyway, I might as well embellish it and maybe try to make it look a little cooler, but also allow more room inside of the frame. This was one of the more challenging parts of making this truss structure and that is these two bars right here. On my original design I did have cross braces going over the more open parts of this truss. After feeling how rigid this truss was already, I figured I didn't need any of these cross braces, but I did want to add two of them just for good measure. They'll only add a little bit of weight and they will add more rigidity, but I also just think they look a little bit cooler than having things just open like this. I figured since there's already so much asymmetry going on just in way of me not being able to pull this off perfectly, if I throw more asymmetrical design elements, that'll make it look more symmetry two asymmetries equal a symmetry, right? That's how that works. Plus it's just more pieces that I can practice welding on and you guys know I definitely need that. Out of all the pieces, these two top bars right here were by far the hardest to make just because there are so many wonky angles going on. I just did the cut, fit, cut, fit technique over and over until I got these to be relatively close without super huge gaps, even though of course they're going to have some gaps. After those were pretty much done and ready to be welded, I just finished up with the rear cross brace. With everything looking pretty good from my freshly cut bars, it was time to fully weld up this entire truss. I know it probably seems and it definitely feels like I haven't made a ton of progress on this project and that has a lot to do with the fact that off camera I have spent a ton of time just recutting and reshaping a lot of this basic structure. This is probably the third reshaping of just this piece alone. My cuts were actually not that bad but it was holding the pieces in place while trying to tack them, especially with how much of a beginner I am at welding. I would spend a lot of time aligning and securing everything to do a tack and then my tack would fail or I would bump it and then it would be tacked but it would be out of alignment and it was just kind of a nightmare. This all boils down to my lack of experience and I know that as these projects go on I will get faster at doing them. It's also a challenge and a battle dealing with my perfectionism because if it was up to me I would would probably never release even one video because I would still be redoing my first video even to this day. So if you're looking at this piece and you're going oh man those angles all look a little off and those welds look terrible it's like trust me I know. The only alternatives is one I become a completely different person who's just magically great at everything the first time or I make a 49 part project and each video is about four hours long and it's just me iterating over this this part of the frame over and over and over again thousands of times until I get it nearly perfect. Anyway, you get what I'm saying and here's a good example of that where I fully welded out the inside thinking I'm going to make everything strong and then yeah, something must have came off because you see that front part? That's not aligned anymore. At this point, it was time to take a break from working on the truss and move on to something I was actually more nervous about messing up. Welding thicker material is a bit more forgiving when you're a beginner welder so I was a little nervous that I was going to blow holes in the sheet metal but it came out okay. So it's the next day and I figured I might as well try to fix that issue because it will bother me it being that off. It's not that big of a deal to redo these pieces although now that I moved that I did have to adjust the other top bars again and I was hoping that I wasn't going to mess that up because I really didn't want to redo those as well. Almost all my problems with misalignment was due to holding things in place while I was trying to tack things and I was using magnets before but this with all the 
these weird angles was proving quite troublesome. So I figured I'd just tape things in place and that actually worked out really well. Another huge problem is when you go for attack and then it moves the part and then you try it again and then it just craters a big hole and then you try again and it's still not tacked. So I try from a different angle and then attacks just fine the first shot. So a lot of this was just things moving on me while I was trying to hold them in place. Another fun thing I did was zap myself with the high frequency star. Watch how fast I throw away this filler rod. And that's what you get when you don't ground your part. It doesn't really hurt, but it's definitely shocking, pun intended. I was already nervous about this particular weld, and right after that, the ground I chose, yeah, just decided to explode on me. Don't really know why that happened other than maybe he was trying to ground through some paint or something like that, but I finally got a good ground. Even though my welds are nothing to write home about, I am getting more comfortable and they are getting easier to make. At this point in time, I really don't care what they look like as long as they perform adequately well. And believe me, I have pounded the crap out of this thing with a hammer, so I feel like it's pretty strong. I am grinding down the sides and the tops, not because I want them to look better but because I want them to fit better. So here's everything pretty much fully welded out. I might add a few more trying to get to the inside corners of those cross braces but aside from that it's definitely strong enough. This is by no means exact or precise or symmetrical in almost any way but it is within the ballpark of how much time I want to spend on it. Here you can see my welds better. They definitely don't look great, but I don't think this is too terrible for a first welding project. This piece is oddly deceptive because it doesn't look very big, and it's not, but there are so many sides that it's quite a bit of welding. I actually ran out of filler rod, but I do have some on order, so I should get them this week. Because I ran out, I wasn't able to fully finish these reinforcement plates. So don't worry, there will be way more welds on these to hold them in place and not just like two small little tacks. Let me know what you guys think so far. Is this turning out to be a disaster or is it looking cool to you? Let me know. I know it seems like there hasn't been a ton of progress since the last video but hopefully that rant previously in this video kind of explains why that is. I will be finishing up two of my other projects and then devoting most of my time to completing this project so hopefully the build will be going faster after that. I also have an even larger project than this this one that I'm going to be starting very soon as well. Now that I've welded up the back of the frame, the truss now fits quite a bit tighter into this spot, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to get it into position, but it's not too bad. I might clearance it a little more, although I do like the fact that it doesn't now just drop down into the frame. That's kind of nice. Even though the part I made isn't perfectly straight or symmetrical, I am pretty happy with how it's turned out and how it's looking. The next thing I'm thinking about is the seat design and that's gonna be pretty daunting because it's gonna make it or break it in terms of how this bike looks. I do want it to be very comfortable but I also want it to look cool and usually those things are like at opposite ends of the spectrum. If you guys have any ideas or suggestions I'm always open to that for all of my projects.
Even though it's not much because I'm just a skeleton and I don't weigh that much, I did jump up and down on it just to give it some stress and it was holding up fine for this, so I think it's gonna be okay. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. There's definitely more to come on this project and others, so stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.